mine were you quick. Catholic? You know what's funny is that my mom, well, my si uh, my siblings all went to Catholic school in Mexico, and uh, my mom herself, I don't know what her actual faith was because, and this is crazy because every form of religion was represented in the house, uh, but I wasn't, uh, I was never you know, taken to church. I was never taught anything from the Bible. So for example, in the house, you'd see pictures of the Virgin Mary on the wall. You'd see crucifixes over the doorways. There'd be Ganesh figures uh, in the house, Buddhas. Um, my mom wore a star of David around her neck and she would light all kinds of different candles. And when you're a little kid and you see this, you don't, you don't see nothing wrong with it. You don't know to question it. And it wasn't until years now later. Now you know you got to pick one. Well, <laughs> and you got to really fight everybody. <laughs> yeah. So my mom never, uh, she never, you know, got me into church and she never told me to pray. She never taught me how to, you know, any of that. It was just be good, be nice to people, and, and they'll be nice to you. That how does very, she explain it? I never asked the question about all the, the figures. I just thought there were cool little things around the house, you know? Yeah. Like I had Transformers and my mom had a Buddha and a Ganesh. It was like, that's her thing, you know? And she had candles. Ganesh and makes it sound Jewish. I think it's Ganesh. I apologize. Ganesh, Jew, it, Ganesh sounds like something like delicious. A, like a dish. Like, yeah. yeah, it does. Um, that's a, it, she sounds like someone she did have, well, who would oh, bet on every, on both teams in the Super Bowl. Yeah, c cover the spread. <laughs> yeah, like, just like <laughs> let's see how we can. She was very much into a lot of things, but she never she never got me into any of them, and so that's why when, uh, you know, growing up, whenever I'd have friends, hey, you want to come with me to you know come to our church or this or that, I'm like, wow, that's uh, you know I don't really do that, uh, but sure, you know, I've I've gone to f several different types of uh, churches to just see what it was like, but I was like, okay, no, I'm good. Here's a, this is a kind of a broad question. How did you, because I think the point of uh, raising kids with religion is they get like a moral framework. How did you build a moral framework independent of church, religion, faith? I'm just curious because I don't know many people who didn't, who didn't grow up with one. The fact that my mom was very, very uh, involved in my life. And I don't just mean like, oh, you know, she, uh, she was a mom and, and fed me and took me to school and, and, and said, you know, take your vitamins and stuff like that. I mean, daily. Um, I would spend a lot of time talking to my mom and she would tell me stories about her growing up. And of course, the neighborhood that we were, the neighborhood we were in was, was not a, a pleasant one. Uh, there was always shootings. There was, you know, the neighbor, I was... <laughs> The neighbor was always bullying me, and so it was one of those things where my mom had a, like, well, this person's this way, this person's that way, you should be like this, and give me examples of people in the neighborhood who had uh, good personalities, and you could tell they were just nice, genuine yeah. people, but there was always that comparison. This person's nice, this person's not nice, and they were right in front of you because it was that kind of neighborhood. Right. So I think that's where I got a lot of the, this is the comparisons, and just my mom, too. She was always very nice. She was kind to people. Was mom 1.0? The other mom before you came along, was she nice? <laughs> oh, whoever my mom was before I came into the picture, I don't know because that's the mom that sent her kids to Mexico. <laughs> but I don't know what the whole story is. Right. I don't know what, you know, because I've never wanted to ask because I feel like if you open a certain door, you got to prepare yourself for all the bullshit that comes with it. Yeah. And I'd rather, I like peace. I yeah. really do. So I'd rather not, you know, I'm, I'm okay not knowing because that's before my time and it doesn't sure, affect your business. That's so funny, mom 1.0. Yeah, she's took me still a with you? No, unfortunately, my mom passed away about 11 years ago. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Because um, I was going to say, it sounds like I would be prying, but you've seen this podcast. I like to pry. So, um, because you grew up so religious and your father still religious, and I'm assuming it's part of the tension or whatever, I had thought watching you, which is like, do you pray? No. Not anymore. When did that stop? Do you so you, do Probably. you believe in a god? I don't know. Yep. I I have no idea. I think I got to a point and it was really difficult in my early 20s and my late teens because I grew up when I was like 20 I like dated an atheist mm -hmm. and I was like, "So you don't have that little voice in your head that is like but there's god." He goes, "No." Nah. I was like, "You so what did your parents tell you growing up? He's like, I got scared of death. And they said, yeah, you're going to die, but you're going to live a good life first. And I was like, what? Like, I, I couldn't even wrap my head around the fact that there were people who never thought about God. Like, I was always taught that everybody has 
this yearning in their heart and their soul and their brain going, there is something bigger and I know it and I don't know what it is. And all they need is for you to say at VBS, like, hey, it's... What's VBS? It's Vacation Bible School. They were always trying to get us to recruit in like middle school and high school. Like, bring your friends. This is when we get them. And uh, they, they really told us that they were like, people are, they want an opportunity to be told like, there's God and here he is and here's the book. And they're like, oh, that's what that yearning's been. And there are people whose parents never raised them with religion and they don't have that. And so where I got to eventually is I was like, I don't know if there's something else. I'm not against it. I don't really have strong feelings one way or the other. I do, what I do believe is that if there is something else and there's a good chance there is, whatever it is, we cannot figure it out. We cannot wrap our heads around it. Yeah. So why are we, we're trying, but it, it's not something that we're gonna unlock. Yeah, that's what I came to I ta in the special where I, the, the DMT fucking strobe part. Mm -hmm. What I came to was like, oh, this is, uh, I experienced the central creation force and was like, oh, this is so far past my comprehension. It's cute that people try. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's cute. And the stories. And then he said this and then he came down and he was, he had props and like, that's all nice, but there's no fucking way you can comprehend it. Yep. Do you wish you did have a frame or do you wish you do you miss the simplicity of it do you feel guilty about not believing do you feel i say i miss the certainty but i never had the certainty i'm jealous of the certainty that people i know right <laughs> that was the thing is like when my mom died i was like everybody said well we're gonna see her again it's okay we're gonna see her again yeah. and i never felt that way and i felt yeah. so guilty because i was like well clearly i'm not believing right, I'm not believing enough, I'm not a good Christian. Because everybody else is so sure that we're gonna see her again and I just don't feel like I'm going to. And that was very disorienting and I think kind of where everything stemmed from. I was always really scared of hell. I never felt like there was a heaven. That's funny. That's yeah. a funny, I think that's more common than you'd think. Yeah. Like, cause it's so, they're both pretty cinematic, but like, One's visceral, yeah, and one's like imagining. One's like you get burnt, and you're yeah. like, "Oh fuck, I fire." Yeah. Whereas heaven's just like, no, it's just nice and chill, <laughs> and you're like, I can't. There's no, there's no sensation to that. Yeah. It's just like, no, it's cool. It's like a fucking Four Seasons. And yeah. My parents weren't religious at all, but they didn't replace it with anything. They never said we don't believe. They didn't even said they never even said we don't believe in God. Yeah. It was not discussed. Ever. Did you see you, but you would see it in movies, right? And go like, what? I mean, oh, God was out. Oh, God. I thought you didn't believe in me. Uh, that's just an expression. I loved oh, God. Of course. I was hanging on to oh, God for yeah. dear life. I wanted George Burns to be God. So it, you had nothing. So I have nothing. And also in that period, there was a, an enormous amount of terror about Russia. <laughs> so in the, you know, the Reagan years, mm -hmm. early 80s, they were scaring us into thinking a nuclear attack was going to happen at any moment. Yes. So that along with no religion, no spirituality, it's not like someone was explaining Buddhism to me or reincarnation or anything that would just became a, a, a gaping hole that it's taken a lifetime to try to fill it with what, something. What is the, when you think, is it the, the, however long the death sequence is <laughs> is it or is it the nothingness that you're afraid that will follow it it's funny because i have a nothingness fear but i also if you said you can live forever that's scarier to me the idea of that so there's no pleasing you there's no pleasing me <laughs> i'm screwed either way the, why would that i used to want to live forever what why does that scare you the enormity of it uh it, it's just too much Oh, that's interesting. There is something structural about death that pleases the human psyche. Gets you off your ass. And, you know, since then, you know, I've, I've read a lot of Buddhism and I'm, I'm interested in, in all of those ideas. And I'm certainly not settled, but I, I, I probably have calmed down a lot compared to, to what it was. How would it, man would it be like d panic attacks, dread? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Just like 
just when it got quiet, it, it was not really handleable for me. So only through meditation that I find a, a place in quiet and with myself that uh, was manageable. But for a long time, it was like, keep your brain thinking about anything but that. And that also drives workaholism and yeah. comedy and the absurdity of life. And isn't it weird we care about these things? And so in a lot of ways, it's what all the comedy is about. It, and more staving off death or the fear of it? Uh, the absurdity of all of it. Just yeah. like none of this makes sense. Yeah. The standards are absurd. I can't believe men and women are supposed to get along. Yeah, everything. Like, yeah. like can then you believe that? Then we die and then you, you fucking disintegrate. And this is the setup for all of it. Yeah. And so, you know, for me, that that's what drives everything is I just, I, I can't believe th that these are the situations. That's why most of my movies are not very imaginative because I don't need Thank it. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't really need it. I, I really feel like things are so bizarre that just trying to get along with anybody is ridiculousness. So you grew up in the Baha'i faith. Mm -hmm. yep. I, I, Lived in Wilmette, Illinois, where there's a oh, high did. temple. Yeah, did you um, go to New Trier High School? I would have. We moved. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, yeah, because I went there for a couple of years to New Trier. Did you really? Yeah, because my parents moved over to the North Shore of Chicago. Yeah, to, uh, there you yeah. go. Yeah. Um, but uh, did you ever go in the temple there? Yeah, about as beautiful a structure as yeah. I've ever been in. Gorgeous. When did they make it? And how much did it cost? They laid the foundation for it in 1912. Started building it in the 30s and 40s, and it wasn't finished until the 50s. Part of your, I know that you had a loss of faith before you came back in the past decade or two and your parents were devout yeah did you sort of i always see catholicism i grew up catholic as the it's like introduction to hypocrisy <laughs> like here you want to know what hypocrisy is here how everyone here lives versus what they yeah claim to be yeah did were you was that part of your uh loss of faith that's hysterical that's really well put and yeah hundred percent. That wasn't all of it. But one of the things that was so weird was Baha'is are all about love and unity and peace, right? Like most world's religions are. So we would go to all these Baha'i meetings. We would sing like Kumbaya, Baha'i songs, like pray, meditate together, read holy writings of the world's religions because Baha'is accept and believe in all of the world's faiths. And we talk about love and bringing people together, healing racial uh, uh, prejudice, you know, it's all about like healing the world, using spiritual tools to heal the world, which I'm very much into. And then we'd come home and my parents wouldn't talk to each other. Mm -hmm. And they certainly weren't having sex. And they certainly, they weren't loving and they would fight and there would be broken dishes and doors slammed and yelling. And, you know, I remember many times we would have a Baha'i gathering at our house, but they'd be in the middle of some fight and like people would be coming in the door and she would like slam and break dishes in the sink, walk, my stepmom, walk through the living room, slam the bedroom door, kabam! And my dad would go, okay, so does anyone want any tea? And you're nine years old, you're like, what the fuck? Yeah, like, what system is this? What the hell is going on here? And then you start to see, because at any relig religion, you're gonna see hypocrisy because people are assholes and we're trying to be better people, but oftentimes the asshole wins out. And then when you get into the Holden Caulfield stage, as I did in around 20, 21 years old, I'm like, fuck this. I don't wanna be yeah. part of this bullshit. And I don't want God and morality and the rules and, and all this hypocrisy that I see around me. Uh, I don't wanna be a part of that. Well, here comes the anxiety. Uh, and how did you figure the anxiety thing out? Or is it just, accepting that it's diabetes the, thing that you're gonna have to keep your eye on at least if so, not treat. So mental health, we talked about this the other day, but the whole conversation about mental health is getting a little played out. Yeah, It's super important to have, but I also feel a little sheepish even talking about it because everyone is talking about their mental health struggles, which maybe is a good thing. And I think it, it, it can be a good yeah, thing. Yeah, it's like it's the hacky things can be correct. Yeah. Meaning Wayne's World, one of the greatest movies ever made. Yeah. But people started saying schwang and not and all that shit. So, which was aggravating. Yeah. That's what she said in your case. And Hallmark cards, five out of six times, they're pretty right on the money yeah. too. 
Yeah, they just it's they're too on the money. <laughs> they're too on That's the money. That's the problem is Wayne's World's <laughs> too funny. <laughs> That's a great analogy. Uh so in the 90s, when I was having these anxiety attacks, I was had a lot of other issues going on. Uh, I didn't know what to do. Uh, I didn't have any money. Therapy was not really an option. I went to therapy when I was at NYU, and then it was too much money after yeah. that. And um, so I did the only thing I knew how to do, which was to look at a possible spiritual path. Because I thought, oh, I've jettisoned the Baha'i faith, and I'm not having anything to do with God maybe there's a spiritual way for me to rectify all this imbalance that's going on in my life. So I really studied a lot of the world's religions and read foundational texts from Hinduism and Buddhism and, and the Bible and many other different religious faiths because I was searching for some... I was being selfish, really. It's it so funny. It wasn't you... like I was like, Gandhi, I'm going to heal the world. It was no. like, yeah. I feel shitty. How do I make myself not feel shitty? I had the same exact experience. Yeah, let me look through these texts. Self-interest is a fine motivation. <laughs> it is. It's a fine motivation. Yeah. I'm My girlfriend now, I'm like, I'm not doing this for good. This is all totally mototivated by my own need and desire to feel good. This is not How an act of generosity. Hey, did you like that? Did you like that? Yeah, did you like it though? You want more? Don't want to work? Would rather watch videos of me grab assing with people? First of all, go up here to subscribe and then go up here to uh, watch more clips. This is like when the weatherman says that there's a high pressure system coming in. Although I'm not really used to the green screen.